All right, now we're going to look at perhaps the most famous of the large language models, ChatGPT. We're going to use the OpenAI API to access it. In the next two sections, we're going to really look at two different ways that you're going to use large language models. Since they're so, well, large, often you don't have the local compute resources that you need to actually run them on your local hardware. That's what we're going to do first. We're going to use OpenAI's API to run the ChatGPT based model that they have there that is, is a closed. You cannot actually see the weights to this. In the next section, we're going to look at Alpaca and see how it and, and Llama, which it's based on, we can actually use something called Lora and run them even on relatively modest systems like Colab. They won't they will be as smart, they won't give as good of responses, but you can run them locally. And if you have the, the resources, you can run the full uh, Llama, Llama 2, and that will give you greater than ChatGPT performance, at least as of the current time. So let's look at this. You don't need to run any sort of GPU on this. You're going to be using the entire OpenAI Python library. So the first thing is you do have to install the OpenAI Python library. If you're running in Google Colab, it does not come with that pre-installed, at least not at this point. So you'll need to do a pip install OpenAI and it'll go through all this stuff and it will install it. You will need a API key for this. It's not free. It's also not very expensive in terms of just the number of resources. If you start to run something in batch on an API, we're just sending tons of stuff at it. You'll probably run up some, some cost, but you'll need to visit this site here and obtain a key. Now, obviously I am removing my key because I don't want all my best friends, you guys on the internet to utilize my key. That, that might get very expensive. So that once you get the key, you put it in there, be very careful when you start putting your key into source code. You may in fact very well want to use an environmental variable or something just to separate it from the code. So the worst thing I could do is upload it to here and um, I don't know what would happen, but it would be expensive. So what you're going to do is you are going to be able to send textual information and there's three classes that we're dealing with. There's the system role. We'll use that. That's really what you're telling ChatGPT, what the context is that you're really doing. So what what is its purpose? And we'll see some examples of that. The user, that's your actual query. That's what you're wanting it to respond to, to get the text to. And the assignment, that's where you're just giving it some precondition information that you may want it to use as part of its answer. So here is an example that I that I pulled from Open OpenAI. I commented on these two because I was trying to keep it down to just one one thing, but this is using GPT 3.5 Turbo. You can use 4 as well. That was just added. And uh, the context is you're a helpful assistant. So ChatGPT, I'm wanting to function as, a, as an assistant. And then we're questioning, what are the five largest USA cities ordered by population? So I put that in there. They, the OpenAI example that I took this from was using the World Series. But you'll see here is your answer, along with a bunch of other JSON telling you how many tokens and other things you've used. Because the tokens really are what you're built on. And here are the five largest cities. Now this is kind of hard to read. That's a bunch of JSON looking text. So you can use this command here and it extracts just this piece out for you. Tons of applications you can do with this. You can tell it to write Python code for you and it'll write Python code for you. You can do all kinds of things. Honestly, I can use it to grade assignments in, in the class. I've already got other means for doing that, but if I didn't, that, that would certainly, certainly work. But the application that we're going to specifically look at is text extraction. So say you had some text. John was born on June 14th, 1995, and he was married on this other date. But you want to extract his birth date. And there's two dates in there, even if you're doing some regular expression. And the dates might be in different formats. So there's all kinds of things going on there. Here's the system prompt. The prompt is what you're really telling this thing to do. You have to extract any birthdays from the input, return the date in the form 10 Feb 1990, or none if there's no birthday. 
it's very important to tell it what to do if it doesn't find something. Otherwise, it tends to just make something up, which is called a hallucinization. Also notice too, I specified extract any birthdays, so you could get more than one back if there are. Otherwise, you need to give it very specific instructions. Return only one birth date. If there are multiple, return the earliest. Something, say, like that. And you can see it found the birth date and it even reformatted it as I had specifically requested it. Now let's run this programmatically. I put in a whole list, all these. Anna started her first job on the 15th of January. She was born on March 5th, and so on. So I've got them mixed together. Birth date might come first, the other date might come first. And it it really specifies them different. Henry March's birth date on, and different date formats. This is the kind of stuff ChatGPT was born, created, to do. So it does really good with this. And you can see it pulls them all out. Now notice some anomalies here. It didn't follow my instructions exactly and what employee does, but it, it went, it, it went down the list and most of them, it did follow my instructions here. It didn't return just the date, but I also didn't say return just the date. Ha common sense, but never assumed that. We'll talk more about that as we get into prompt engineering. And this last one, it did not give me, it did not put it in the right format. So such is the nature of how these kind of things will work. So this is ChatGPT. You can see how to query it through an API. Not required to purchase an API key, certainly for the course, entirely up to you. Well, thank you for watching this video. And if this was useful, please give the video a like and subscribe so that you see the rest of the material from this course.